let us start the session okay because i think uh, it's already late let let me uh, share my screen Can you see my screen? Hello. No, so we good. I think I've shared the screen. Who's not able to see? Because right now I'm kept it as a full screen. Ah, one minute. Yeah. No, so it's not possible. Just a minute. Now you can see. yeah so we'll talk about seizure and ap epilepsy because as homeopathic practitioner we often find cases which are already on on some or the other kind of uh, treatment for the convulsions and uh, epilepsy so for first and foremost what is important for us to know is what is the difference between a seizure and an epilepsy so basically when you talk about seizure and epilepsy it automatically uh, gives us an idea that the seat of disease or the area from where the disease is originating is uh, is the uh, central nervous system and the brain so let us understand the different lobes of the brain or different regions of the brain or the areas of the brain the frontal area is uh, basically frontal lobe is a lobe which is related to its function is mainly movement problem solving concentration the personality of the person and the mood which the person possesses then followed by this we have broca's speech control area if you can see it broca's speech control area this is a important area because if there is a damage to this particular area the person's ability to talk is lost and it often presents with uh, aphasia means inability to express oneself because the motor area of that particular uh, uh, lobe has been damaged then behind that we have a motor uh, area which is responsible for the uh, control of the voluntary muscle just posterior to that we have a sensory area which is related to various sensations especially the primary sensation of touch pressure pain and temp temperature just posterior to the sensory area is the parietal lobe the entire lobe is responsible primarily because of for the sensations languages perception like uh, two point discrimination and uh, uh, it is responsible for body awareness the various uh, the sensory awareness of the body the position the way we are lying the way we are sitting and the attention behind the uh, behind the parietal lobe there is uh, an occipital lobe which is basically responsible for the vision and the perception visual perception and there is a lobe which is beneath the parietal lobe which is responsible for uh, that's known as the temporal lobe which is very important as far as the epilepsy is concerned this is an area which is basically responsible for the hearing language and the memory and uh, here in this temporal lobe there is a vernicase area which leads to you know uh, the functioning of the language comprehension and uh, just uh, the posterior aspect or the tail end of the brain we have a cerebellum which is as we all know it is responsible for the balance and further down when it descends there is brain stem which is responsible for various various vital uh, functioning of the body uh, related to the cardiovascular system that is uh, heart rate then uh, the breathing respiratory system and the level of consciousness that is res reticular uh, activating system that is uh, ras system which leads to consciousness conscious awareness so let us talk about epilepsy if you can see this uh, picture the uh, 
the neuronal impulses in the normal brain is often uh, very synchronized and it is at the same pace. As far as the generalized epilepsy is concerned, you can see the red area. It, it means the majority portion of the brain, the neuronal impulses are out of proportion. They are asynchronous and they are firing at a higher rate. And that is the reason why the excitatory uh, neurotransmitters are much, much higher in comparison to the inhibitory uh, uh, neurotransmitters, which, uh, uh, which leads to a generalized epilepsy. Then the third photograph shows that there is a small area, which is a very discrete area or the focal area from where there is an abnormal impulse, which can be, which can be reported on this spect spectrometry scan. And that leads to the focal uh, seizure, that leads to the focal uh, convergence. This uh, photograph we'll later on discuss when we are talking about uh, the various types of convergence and the seizures. So let us understand what you mean by seizure. So there is always a confusion that what do you mean by seizure and what do you mean by, you know, uh, uh, epilepsy. Because... Uh, it cannot be used uh, vice versa, you know. When we are uh, actually uh, trying to uh, label a, a particular uh, uh, episode of conversion as seizure or epilepsy, we have to be very careful. So basically, seizure is nothing but it's a uh, paroxysmal event, which is an abnormal, excessive, hypersynchronous discharges from an aggregate of CNS neuron. So there is a neuron a pool of neuron where there is an abnormal and excessive uh, out of proportion hypersynchronous discharge, neuronal impulses are discharged and that leads to a, a particular uh, conversion. That's known as a seizure. So single episode is known as a seizure. It's a clinical symptom. Seizure is a clinical symptom. Okay. So that is what a single episode or a, a particular conversion which has got a definite cause behind is termed as as a seizure. Like example, if I have a patient in, in the uh, hospital, his electrolyte is completely haywire. If a person has got hyponatremia, no sodium, then the person gets a conversion. That's known as a seizure episode or a conversion. Uh, in a, a common language, it is known as conversion. And in a, in a medical language or medical terminology, it is known as seizure. The seizure, which is secondary to hyponatremia. So here we find a definite cause. And if we correct this cause, then the seizure can get uh, absolutely, uh, it will absolutely disappear. The patient is absolutely uh, fine and asymptomatic. So the difference between seizure and epilepsy, which we are talking. Now we talk about epilepsy. Epilepsy is a chronic condition. It, it is a chronic condition. See, now if we understand from the Animanian point of view or the classification of the disease, epilepsy is classified as a chronic, dynamic and miasmatic disease. It's a chronic a condition which in which there is a recurrent seizures, recurrent episodes of convergence. Once one episode of conversion can be ter termed as seizure. But if these seizures are coming time and again and it is recurrent and there is a brief phase of uh, uh, asymptomatic uh, phase or the, there are no symptoms in this particular phase between the two episodes and then again it is coming uh, in a recurrent fashion that, that is known as uh, epilepsy and the chronicity, the word chronicity is very, very, very important. So this is a primary di difference. Hope everyone has understood because we cannot use epilepsy as seizure and seizure as epilepsy. When until unless we don't uh, do all the investigation, we rule out all the pathological causes, we cannot term an individual uh, that he is suffering from epilepsy. There may be a case where patient comes uh, with a brain tumor and he is getting recurrent episodes of conversion and he has not been investigated. Then you cannot just uh, treat it like it is an epilepsy because the person is not being investigated. The primary cause has not been ruled out. What is the cause of the disease? So again, the causation of a disease is very important whether we understand from a clinical point, point of view or if we are understanding from a homeopathic point of view. So this is a primary difference. For anybody, now this is a take-home message. If you want to say, label someone is suffering from epilepsy, we have to see to it that all the investigations have been ruled out in that particular uh, person, whether there is an imaging which needs to be done or the blood investigation which needs to be done because other causes of the disease has to be ruled out. So, 
Caesars, if you understand, they are usually single episodic, and there is always a definite correctable cause which is present in cases of Caesar, which we need to understand. Like example, if there is a hypoglycemia. So let me share an example where I was uh, uh, witnessing a case. Uh, a elderly lady. She was a known diabetic. She was on oral hypoglycemic agent, and uh, and she had taken the medicine. She forgot to eat the food, and suddenly she landed up with you know seizures, and and the person, uh, the lady landed up into a coma, and still she is not recovering, and she's under my care, and. Uh, when i had seen she was completely uh, irresponsive and she was just lying down and thereafter in last uh, you know four five days before we got a video from that same lady and she is right now opening her eyes and she is moving her limbs and all so imagine a a very small cause like uh, low blood sugar or hypoglycemia can also re- lead to seizures and and ultimately if the brain goes into a very prolonged hypoglycemic state there will be a damage and the person may, can can land up into a coma. So this is what I am trying to say time and again. And I think this thing is very important. So there, there, therefore, the concept of causation is very important when we are dealing with a, a seizure uh, disorders or epilepsy. So identifying a pathological cause for a seizure is very, very crucial. This will help us to differentiate whether it is a seizure or an epilepsy. I think I have already made it quite clear. And from this point of view, point onwards, everyone who has been attending this session will be very clear when to label it as a seizure and when to label it as an epilepsy. Let us proceed further. The seizures are divided into uh, different categories. First category is a partial seizure or a focal seizure. As I have already discussed in the earlier photograph, here the abnormality is very, very localized and it is localized in a small portion of the brain. And that's why whichever portion of the brain, uh, there is an abnormality. The same portion is getting abnormal movements. And that is how it is known as partial seizure because it is very, very focal, local. And that's why it is labeled as partial seizure. Whereas the other category is a generalized seizure where the larger portion of the brain is going against uh, the synchrony of the neuronal impulses. They become asynchronous. And they are leading to a haywalk in the body and the person gets into a generalized tonic-clonic convergence. And that is known as generalized seizure. Now, if we understand the definition, seizure which are beginning from the discrete region of the cerebral cortex, it is known as focal seizure. These focal seizure or the partial seizures are further classified or further divided into simple partial seizure. Simple partial seizure. So if there is simple, there has to be something which is complex. Okay, so there is a complex partial seizure. The first is a simple partial seizure. Second is a complex partial seizure. And the third is this partial seizure. Initially, it is local and focal and eventually it becomes generalized. So that is a partial seizure with secondary generalization. Are you all understanding? So now again, let me give you a take home message. The seizures are further divided into a local, focal or a partial seizure. And the other category is the generalized seizure where the entire economy or the body is for a toss. There is a generalized tonic clonic uh, convergence. Then these partial seizures are further divided into a simple partial seizure, complex partial seizure and the partial seizure which eventually gets converted into a generalized seizure. So now... At the end, you will ask what is what is the meaning of simple partial seizures. Yeah, so let us understand. This is the meaning of a generalized seizure. The entire brain or the entire neuron uh, pool of neuron is going into an abnormal or uh, asynchronous uh, neuronal impulses, which is actually presented as a generalized tonic-clonic convergence. This is what is known as generalized seizure. Partial seizure or the focal seizure is where the discrete portion or the local portion of the brain or the focal portion of the brain is going for a uh, for a abnormal impulse and that is known as partial seizure or the focal seizure. Now, when we were talking about the partial seizure, we have divided into three, three categories. One was a simple partial, second was a complex partial, and the third was a partial seizure, which is eventually getting into a generalized seizure. So now let us understand what you mean by simple partial seizure. So when you talk about simple partial seizure, 
what we actually mean is the person has got a focal seizure like example there is convulsion of the hand like my hand is moving it is convulsing but my consciousness is fully preserved so this is known as a focal convulsion where the patient may talk to you there is a convulsion my hand is moving it is convulsing but you can see in the in the camera you know it is conversing but my consciousness is aware i can give the lecture so the consciousness is fully preserved and it usually pro produces either a motor this is a motor convulsion okay or it can have a sensory sensory uh, uh, abnormalities you know uh, okay or it can produce autonomic features or it can produce some psychic symptoms you know so these are all types of simple partial seizures so simple partial can be either motor where the muscles are involved sensory where i can get a funny sensation in my epigastrium or i can get a funny sensation that you know uh, there is some something you know abnormal uh, which is happening either can i can hear something or i am seeing something that can also be a part of conversion and there can be autonomic feature like sudden sweating sudden flushing of uh, uh, hot flushes you know sudden flushing of the body these are also also one form of convulsion but these are classified as a simple partial seizure and there are some convulsions which are you know uh, where there is simple partial seizure where there is a psychic abnormality where the suddenly the person behaves you know goes into his own own uh, world or starts imagining something or you know there is some some the person is lost this, there is a there is something called as a deja, deja vu where they start uh, uh, perceiving things which as if they have seen it earlier now they start feeling okay as if i have seen this earlier also that is known as deja vu deja vu d e j a v u so now as we all understand so when i am trying to describe all this thing i think we all see all these patients when we open our repertory on materia medica we read all these remedies you know like focal convulsion the movement of the hand is there or there is a sensory perception which happens that is also there given in our homeopathic materia medica books there are autonomic features are there these are also given in there are psychic symptoms so this is how when we understand it clinically we can correlate it correlate well because you get a peculiar thing a person of partial seizure may get any form of a presentation the presentation is always dependent on the individualization of that person so if i am a person suffering from a simple partial seizure depending on my individualization i will get a particular set of symptoms and these symptoms will guide us to a proper similimum so here the concept of individualization has to be kept in mind when we are trying to take a history when we are taking a history we will be able to take better history only if we know what is the classification of these uh, types of convulsions you know so now when we were talking about motor we spoke about sensory simple sensory then we spoke about the autonomic feature in a simple partial then we spoke about uh, the psychic uh, symptoms which are coming up now let us understand what do you mean by motor so i was giving you this example where my hand is having a focal involuntary movement i try to control but i cannot control so that's a focal involuntary movement there are certain involuntary movement to begin with it may start with the finger okay then it may involve the larger portion of the extremity and these this particular types of you know seizure where they begin from the small little finger or any finger and then it is going uh, upwards or it may go in other part of the body is known as jacksonian epilepsy or it is known as jacksonian march so these type of convulsions were first studied by a gentleman named jacksonian and he labeled and now with you know because of the honor he studied all this thing with an honor we label it as a jacksonian march i think these convulsions are given in our materia medica let us understand step by step and it will be easier for you to remember so there are certain uh, simple partial motor seizure they are consciousness is preserved so you remember in these simple partial simple word means the consciousness is preserved like i am giving you a lecture i am i may have a simple partial seizure okay so this this uh, particular category the consciousness is preserved now we to talk about there is a focal convulsion and after some time this particular hand gets completely paralyzed you know paralyzed for few hours or for few minutes 
Okay, so this paralysis, which is followed by a conversion, is known as Todd's paralysis. It's known as Todd's paralysis. Okay, and it is a transient paralysis, <coughs> and it is post-conversion, <coughs> and the conversions also are focal. See, remember, in generalized tonic clonic, clonic conversions, also after the conversions are over, the person becomes unconscious. Person is irresponsive. The person goes into a transient comatose state. So the, that particular uh, episode of transient comatose state is different from thoughts paralysis. Thoughts paralysis, the consciousness is preserved. Only the local paralysis is there. That's the meaning of thoughts paralysis. And there are simple pass, partial seizures which will continue for days and hours. Okay. So like this, if I get a fo focal convergence, it will continue for for hours together, for even days together. You know, something like this. So that's known as a simple partial seizure which continues for hours or days, okay? I hope you all are understanding. I am going very slowly, okay? Again, to revise from the start, the seizure disorder is further divided into a partial seizure or a focal seizure. Then there is a generalized seizure, okay? Generalized seizure means generalized tonic clonic spasm can come or convulsions can come. The uh, seizure, which are partial or focal, is further divided into further divided into simple partial seizure, complex partial seizure, or the partial seizures which gets converted into a secondary generalized seizure. Then now we took a category of simple partial seizure, and then we started describing it further into a simple partial, which is motor type. Motor type is further divided into focal involuntary or Jacksonian march, or torch paralysis, or the partial seizure, which is continuing for hours or days together. So now we were talking of about Jacksonian march. So this is a diagram which presents a particular lobe or the cerebral cortex. Okay, the cerebral cortex, how the body representation is there on the cerebral cortex. So if you understand, when we talk about Jacksonian march, you can see there is a thumb or the finger. Okay, it has been mentioned that little finger is there. Then there is a ring finger, middle finger, index finger and the thumb. So that means if the person gets a Jacksonian conversion or Jacksonian march and it begins from the little finger. So it has two options. Either this little finger conversion will move to the hand or the little finger Conversion will get transmitted to ring finger, middle finger, index finger, thumb, then it will go to neck because this is how how the disease, uh, these things have been presented. Okay, this conversion, this is how uh, uh, what we say, uh, the uh, brain representation of all the uh, body uh, parts, the brain has got the presentation in this particular representation in, in this particular fashion. So if there is a little finger involved, followed by which there will be a ring finger, middle finger, index, thumb, neck, eyebrows, eyelids, and this is how the conversion will set in. So this particular diagram will show us how the uh, Jacksonian march will pro proceed further and <clears throat> to our uh, 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 rescue or to our pleasure, we have the uh, certain drugs where there is a location or the beginning of the conversions already mentioned, the conversion uh, beginning in the abdomen. Can you see this? The conversion beginning in the abdomen, the conversion beginning in the arm. And we talk about fingers and toes, the conversion beginning, beginning in fingers and toes. The cuprin metallicum, cuprin metallicum is the drug where there is a conversion which is beginning in the, in the fingers and toes. Can you see? And the other remedy is cupr cuprum aceticum and the conversion which is beginning in the toes is hyd hydrocyanic acid. So if there is a focal conversion which is beginning from the fingers and the toes, you should always remember drugs like cuprum metallicum, cuprum aceticum and if it is beginning specifically in the toes, then you can keep uh, in mind the uh, hydrocyanic acid and uh, cuprum aceticum. So this is how if we understand clinically and we uh, reflect it into a repertory. This is uh, this name of this repertory is Murphy's repertory. So if you read it clinically, we find certain 
you know characteristic peculiar locations and if the same is studied in materia medica we can give these medicines and we can we will definitely get the results now if you understand the torts paralysis if you are understanding torts paralysis very well so here there is conversion with paralysis if you see this rubric which is given in murphy's repertory in the chapter of nerves there is conversion with paralysis and in that particular category we have got five marks remedy as causticum and if you read a followed by paralysis conversion followed by paralysis causticum and elapse these are two remedies which are there so that means if a patient comes with a, a post conversion paralysis also known as torts paralysis then the causticum is and the elapse is a uh, is they are the drugs of choice you know causticum and elapse are the drugs of choice and as we all know in in materia medica causticum is also a remedy which is definitely a remedy for paralysis of single parts so if you make a proper representation and correlation with jacksonian epilepsy or jacksonian march which is followed by torts paralysis torts paralysis again there is a paralysis of a local focal area where there is a conversion so there will be a paralysis of either a hand or a leg so then the causticum can be used in these cases because causticum is a good drug for paralysis of single parts okay this is how we are trying to correlate with uh, repertory and materia medica so let us go so this is what we this diagram will show us what we mean by tonic clonic uh, spasm which will be which we will talk when we are talking about the generalized tonic clonic convergence often in homeopathic repertory convergences and epilepsies are the terms which are used synonym so when we are trying to uh, clinically understand we have to first of foremost understand that epilepsy is the diagnosis which is been achieved after ruling out other pathological causes of the brain first thing second when we are looking into uh, looking into a repertory epilepsy has been reflected with a context that it is a chronic phenomena in repertory third when we talk talk about conversion as a rubric we are thinking from a point of view that conversion is one particular episode so when the person is epilepsy is a diagnosis but finally a person who suffering from epilepsy will get conversions so we have to see what type of conversions the person gets so we will study okay conversions the beginning from the finger beginning the beginning from the toes conversions are coming like other modalities like when the person is getting heated up or the so these particular modalities will often give us a particular uh, 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 what we say a range of remedies or a group of remedies which will help us to reach the minimum so indirectly the modalities the aura with which the epilepsy is beginning or the conversions are beginning these are all important uh, symptoms which needs to be collected or kept in mind while we are taking a case of a person who is suffering from epilepsy so that means modalities the preictal phase means before the epilepsy starts what is the phase that is known as preictal ictal ictal means what ictal means ictal means is it means the uh, when the convergences are actually happening that is known as the, the ictal phase okay and post ictal means once the convergences are over convergences are over those, those that phase is known as post ictal phase okay so that is how we have to see look into the repertory that is the way in which we look into the repertory so we had we are over with the simple partial motor seizure now simple partial again i will repeat simple word means the consciousness is preserved partial means there is only a part of the body is going into a, a, a epileptic uh, episode or or the conversion only a focal part okay and sensory seizure means there is sensory uh, symptoms which are coming up the somatic sensation like the person will start feeling paresthesias so these conversions are basically these uh, uh, seizures are basically a representation of the abnormal neuronal impulse in a particular part of the brain so if the sensory area is involved suppose the parietal lobe uh, or, or is involved 
the parietal lobe is to do with sensation so it will manifest as somatic sensation like paresthesias or the visual flashing of light or the hallucination is there visual hallucination is there or there is a loss of balance is there or that is known as vertigo which will be there or there is a unusual intense odor if the temporal lobe is involved there is unusual temporal uh, i mean the odor or olfactory thing has been there then sounds are the, some sounds are there you know uh, or there is a vague sensation which is there in the stomach and the head okay so this is to do with the simple partial sensory type of seizure then the other type is simple partial autonomic seizure which is flushing and sweating and pilo erection pilo erection is also there then the psychic symptom psychic means the person may not actually get converged but they have abnormal behavior because of the higher cortical dysfunction which is happening especially the frontal lobe which is involved there is an internal feeling of fear the person may get that intense fear and these are all episodic or once in a while you know sense of impending changes you know there is some vague sensation which is coming there is a phenomena the way the person is disconnected with the reality and detachment is there he is just staring okay and depersonalization complete change in the habit in which the person is being like sitting standing uh, or clothing or the way the person is talking and the deja vu deja vu means the person will feel as if this thing has happened earlier also so this imaginary thing which happens is or the delusion which develops as if this thing has happened earlier also micropsia or macropsia means they start seeing generally a object very very small or they will magnify they will see it a very enlarged you know that particular sensation which also develops in these person who has got a psychic uh, symptoms during the seizure so there is a rubric of depersonalization personalization depersonalization in a psychic type of uh, seizure simple partial psychic seizure where uh, which is given in murphy's repertory here the conversion with with the changing in character changing in the character is there the stomonium and belladonna can whether there will be you know change in their character which is seen then deja vu deja vu where the person gets a delusion as if you know something has happened earlier also so there anhelinum anhelinum is given in boric if you read it it is a beautiful remedy for this then sulfur staphysegrian protalis cascaleva and uh, and if you go in the in a cross reference where delusions experienced before thought everything had been there there is a remedy known as ruta or kalibrom kalibrom is a very important remedy for for a conversion so we should keep kalibrom in mind and ruta is another remedy which has got deja vu so these are certain things and way we can approach so that our hunt or our search for similimum is narrowed and we can reach the similimum fast so now we are done with simple we are now done with the simple uh, partial seizure which is further divided into motor sensory autonomic and psychic symptoms which are coming now we talk about complex partial seizure again the partial word means focal focal or a, a local area of the body is getting involved but complex when the word complex is added to it it means the loss of consciousness is there the focal seizure which are accompanied by transient impairment of the ability to normal contact with the environment the person will not have a normal contact that means the consciousness is lost there is during the episode the person will not have any response to verbal or visual command there will be no awareness no recollection of the event what has happened after the person has been you know out of this episode the person will not recollect what happened during the episode and there may be a loss of uh, memory and there will be a behavioral arrest and the motionless stare means the person will keep on looking motionless and he will be just looking and just looking and just looking and there will be the behavior will get like example i am writing something i will suddenly stop writing if i am talking to someone i will suddenly stop talking you know so these complex par partial seizures are they are, are are there and these these things have to be kept in mind so 
even when there is a behavioral arrest there may be a point where the person will start doing certain movements time and again like like you know moving uh, uh you know blinking eyes or you know chewing movement of the of the or there is some pitching which can happen okay or and or smacking of lips okay or swallowing or picking movements of the hand suddenly you know so these are all transient phase which develops and there is these movements which are seen abnormalities are seen and there is anterograde amnesia and post ictal aphasia post ictal aphasia means once the convulsions are over or this episode is over the person will not be able to talk not be able to explain and will not remember what has happened you know during the episode so there is a transient amnesia so these type of uh, of cases are also there when we are taking the history all this thing has to be kept in mind we have to ask the person what happens you know do you know what happens so he will say i don't know what has happened so either it can be sudden that the person doesn't know the bystanders who are whoever is coming the relatives we have to ask what is he actually doing whether there is a blinking of the eyes or there is a chewing movement of the of the mouth or there is a smack lip smacking which is happening or involuntary movements of picking or something is there or there is a lot transient loss of you know ask whether the person remembers so all these things are very important when you're doing a history taking because this will be give us the diagnosis clear diagnosis so this is what actually happens in a complex partial seizure all this thing can happen all this thing can happen the person can get a can you just go through it slowly i have already spoken impairment of consciousness thinking is impaired the person will just look like this the person's thought process is arrested person will look blank okay so this is basically because of the involvement of the superior temporal gyrus superior temporal gyrus okay so this is a where you may get a even the hallucination or you know these all are there dysphagia is there. so these are all seen in a complex partial uh, seizure also complex partial seizure because there is no sudden generalized tonic clonic convulsion seen this is a very transient phenomena only because there is loss of consciousness that's why it is uh, kept, uh, labeled as a complex a uh, complex word has been introduced with the partial and the third category is partial seizure with secondary generalization where the focal uh, seizure gets travel to the entire cerebral hemisphere and there is a generalization which is seen okay so we have almost completed 50% the seizure disorders seizure are again to recap and take home are something which has got a single episodics or there will be multiple episode but definitely there is a underlying correctable cause epilepsy is is the term which is given to a, a chronic phenomena where there is a recurrent uh, recurrent episodes of convulsions and eventually you don't come to any any concrete cause of the disease in. so this is something where there is an abnormality in 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 uh, in episodes you know and there is a chronic and recurrence which is seen in epilepsy so now let us go on another category which is known as generalized seizure generalized now we were talking about the partial seizure now we talk about the generalized seizures these are the seizures where we find bilateral clinical and electro uh, electrographic electroencephalographic events without any detectable focal onset so there is a generalized thing which is seen when the say, through the cerebral cortex when we put a do an eeg what we see the waves are seen from various parts of the brain and they are you know can be can be categorized into various categories one of the category is petit mal epilepsy petit mal epilepsy is a type of generalized seizure okay generalized seizure that's also known as absence seizure and there are a typical absence seizure there are two categories one is absence seizure which is a petit petit mal the other is a atypical absence seizure so in absence seizure there are sudden lapses of consciousness means loss of consciousness without loss of postural control 
so it is a sudden but it is very brief very short lasting like i am looking at you and suddenly i am away okay i come back to normal it is hardly for few seconds less than 10 second 20 second 30 second i will look at you you count for 5 10 are what has happened dr akesh what has happened and i am back to original consciousness whereas atypical absences are our loss of consciousness is of a longer duration the person looks and you know looks and looks and it's of a longer duration in minutes <coughs> okay and what is more important is there is there is no loss of postural control there is no loss of postural control in both the category there is no loss of postural means i will be sitting upright i will be standing uh, i will be standing upright you know so there is no drop there is no postural drop okay absence seizure are sudden onset sudden regain of consciousness it is suddenness so this history of suddenness is important when we are talking to the relative and when we are taking the history because when the person who is suffering will not be able to give you this you know suddenness is important in absence seizure a typical absence seizure it will be slow in onset and slow in cessation basically both has got same symptomatology only thing is uh, only differences of the onset and the duration okay both both have a same symptomatology <clears throat> and absence seizures seizures can be sometime accompanied by subtle bilateral motor signs like rapid blinking of the eyelids like this like this like this and chewing movements or small amplitude clonic movements of the hand like this like this like this okay there is no generalized tonic clonic convergence there is no tonic phase in that but there is just just very mild and subtle things which can be there in absence seizure in in uh, atypical absence seizure whatever is very subtle become more pronounced in atypical absence seizure symptomatology is very very similar but it become more pronounced there will be more 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 blinking or there may be you know uh, there will be more serious kind of a clonic uh, spasms or or the convulsions or there will be more coarse and obvious chewing movements okay so these are uh, seen in atypical and absence seizure what we often find it is absence seizure are more common in early childhood and where the child herself or himself is not aware and many a time these seizures they go undiagnosed and they are often uh, interpreted the kids are often interpreted they are doing daydreaming and they are not interested in studying and what happens is you end up you know shouting at the child and eventually the performance in the school starts dropping but actually the person is suffering there is a physical suffering and there is a underlying generalized seizure classified as atypical uh, sorry absence seizure it's a type of absence seizure we need to diagnose it and we need to come to a conclusion that you know that this is not just a behavioral problem there is something abnormal and many a time the child may get such episode more than 100 episodes a day okay this is about absence seizure now here atypical absence seizure we have to understand all the symptoms go hand in hand but here the child may have underlying mental retardation may have some neurological dysfunction okay but in absence seizure the child intellect is very good the child is doing everything very nicely but there are episodes where the child goes and gets lost into the environment he is just looking having a blank stare and that is also very transient which is misinterpreted by the teachers relatives and the family members that the child is having some some kind of you know malingering or some kind of you know uh, feigning of illness or there is some some behavioral issues but basically the child is suffering from absence seizure many a time they may get more than 100 episodes a day so you imagine if a child is getting getting these episode very very frequently and it is getting you know more and more the child will not be having uh, what we say a proper optimum performance in day to day life in in the school and that leads to the deterioration and that's how you know the child start getting uh, some form of psychological symptoms they go into depression they feel they feel neglected they feel left out so this is how we as a homeopathic physician we have to pick up okay that's very important uh, uh, and now when we talk about petit mal epilepsy we have got remedies like artemisia vulgaris 
Artemisia vulgaris, which is a good remedy. Okay. Now, if you see conversions in the chapter of in the Murphy's repertory, I am purposely using Murphy's because we don't use Murphy's repertory, and it's one of the best uh, clinical repertory or pathological repertory which we need to understand. Here, if you see the conversions which are several times recurrent, if I have underlined it, there is Artemisia vulgaris and Secuta. Artemisia vulgaris is one of the remedy for petit mal epilepsy. And there are recurrent such episodes all throughout the day, as, my, as many as 100, 150, 200. Okay, so we spoke about absent seizure and I, I tried my best to differentiate between a typical absent seizure and a atypical absent seizure. Both go hand in hand, just the differences of the duration of unconsciousness. In atypical, the unconsciousness or the loss of consciousness is of a longer duration. And the onset of the symptoms, onset of the symptom, onset in absence seizure is sudden and there is sudden regain of the consciousness. Whereas here it is a slow onset and slow regaining of the consciousness and intellectually absence seizure ch children are quite good. But in atypical absence seizure there may be underlying structural abnormalities seen and because of that they may be person may have a mental impairment or there can be you know a mental retardation also in such patients. So a person who is mentally retarded or suffering from some form of cerebral palsy and you find the child having all these things, then, then you can label it as generalized seizure with a atypical absence seizure category. <coughs> then we talk about generalized tonic clonic seizures. Generalized tonic clonic seizures. Now the word is generalized tonic clonic seizures. Now we have to understand generalized means the full body gets involved. They are abrupt in onset without any warning sign. Without any warning sign. There is a premonitory symptom that is known as preictal. Premonitory means the person may feel that now I am going to get the conversion that is known as premonitory symptom. As it is seen in simple partial seizure, I told you in simple partial seizure, there is a premonitory symptom in terms of they may get a vague sensation, they may get a deja vu, they may feel okay, or they may get, feel epigastric sensations, you know, epigastric sensations. They may feel, you know, there is a, a there is something visual hallucination, or they may get some sounds. So the same th premonitory symptoms can be seen in these patients also, which is usually followed by secondary generalized seizures. Okay, means a person will go into convulsions. Whereas in simple partial, the person only has got sensation. There is no generalized tonic clonic conversion. So this is a difference between simple partial sensory seizure from the generalized tonic clonic seizure. One part of the symptom is there in both, but generalized tonic clonic seizure may get active conversions. Okay, so that is very important. So there is always a pre ictal phase, means before the conversion, there is a phase where you get abnormal sensation and this becomes a homeopathic characteristic when the person comes they will tell us okay we get this sensation you know i get a vague sensation in my in my solar plexus or i feel something going to start from my solar plexus or in my in my uh, umbilical area or or around my umbilical area <coughs> okay so these sensations are very important because based on these sensation and these these symptoms which is there in the pre-monetary uh, phase or pre-ictal phase becomes a characteristic symptom and can be taken up in the totality and evaluation and the remedy can be finalized. Ictal phase is a phase where there is a conversion and the post-ictal phase is a phase after the conversion stops. <clears throat> I've already mentioned about the pre-ictal phase and that is what is known as aura. When you open the chapter in the repertory, conversion, epilepsy, aura, that's the actual meaning of the aura. What is the aura which the person gets? Visual, sensory, olfactory, okay, uh, auditory, okay, or, you know, simple sensory, tactile sensory, all this forms the aura. And it is homeopathically important. Now, let us understand in this particular uh, chapter of Murphy's, I would share something very, very interesting. Now epilepsy, there is an aura 
where there is auditory disturbances can you read this i am my cursor is moving there auditory disturbances and the remedy simple remedy like belladonna calcarea cicuta is given in this then there is a feeling sensory tactile feeling of coldness in the, of the feet before the conversion the person says that i feel there is coldness of the feet this is a this is a type of aura where lachesis is there or silica has been mentioned can you see this so how do we how do we you know come to this there is a peculiar aura where the person feels is blind you know there is a blindness and then there is a cupram given as a remedy if you can see there is a aura where the person gets confused there is lachesis given as a remedy so this is how we have to come to a you know there is an aura where there is a chewing motion chewing motion of the face like this and the remedy beautiful remedy given calcarea carb calcarea carb is a remedy which is given okay there is a feeling vague feeling in the fingers and toes that this is an aura maybe the conversion may start but this is an aura where the cupram is the remedy there is a another rubric if you go on this side genitalia genitalia there is an aura which begins from the genitals that's known as bufo the remedy is bufo yeah the aura begins in the heart calcarea ars yeah and there is a sensation that mouse is running up and down the limb and there is a visual or oral disturbance there is something running on the body the remedies are belladonna and calcarea so now i am trying to just give you an example that how do we understand clinically and how do we uh, apply a clinical understanding into homeopathy and how do we utilize a repertory which is a rich uh, reservoir of information and we often miss this when we go into case taking many a times the patient relative will tell us are just akdi aati hai patient ko thoda generalized tonic clonic conversion hota hai aur kuch nahi but if you go into detail and find case taking we can find all these rubrics what happens you know we go kuch sunai deta hai kuch dikhai deta hai kuch mehsoos hota hai kuch skin pe mehsoos hota hai kuch aapko kuch bhas hota hai kuch aapko feel hota hai all these symptoms and right questions will help us to enumerate good data and that will help us to formulate the totality you know now this uh aura bini for from solar plexus the remedies like cicuta sulfur nutsomica and the indigo indigo is a drug which has been mentioned from there and you know this is a beautiful rubric which is given dr saab agar conversion aata hai usse pehle you know my my speech becomes an intelligent i mean I, you know i start talking vague you know i don't there is no head and tail of whatever i am talking talking you know the remedy is bufo so here i will write to give you an example i have a, a patient under my care she is 12 to 13 years of age i think and she is you know uh, uh, when she is you know suddenly she gets lost in the environment and all and and you know she just keeps on staring and and the relatives are just asking uh her name is berevi berevi what is happening to you berevi what is happening to you and after few seconds she gets up she she uh, she returns into consciousness so this is a typical case of absence seizure there is no tonic clonic conversion and there was one episode where she was trying to lose her balance but she could retain the balance on her own <laughs> so she is a, a typical case of absence seizure and we started treating her by using remedies there was one episode where she lost a uh, lost lost her sleep and she got a conversion and during that episode we had used the remedy called as cocculus and she uh, she uh, recovered from that episode beautifully then then the second time when she came we put her on a constitutional drug as phosphorus and she is now more than 60 70% better and she is not getting that conversion at all you know so this this is how we can utilize uh, uh, uh what we say uh, our uh, uh, repertory knowledge and we can give the drug so now one more aura is the ravenous appetite before the conversion the patient will come are mujhe itna bhook lagta hai before the conversion the remedy is calcarea and hyoscyamus i think all the all the uh, uh, aura you can see which has been mentioned and it is mentioned in murphy's repertory if you like to discuss after the lecture we can discuss it out but 
this is how we can i want to just teach you the approach and the process rest the remedy you will find i will show you the path the destination you will find you know that's the entire thing about medicine we have to just give protocols and the processes and path so that the the <coughs> coming generation can follow it so initial this was the pre monetary or the pre ictal when the ictal phase starts there is a tonic phase where there is a tonic contraction of the muscles the contraction of the expiratory and the laryngeal mus muscles are also there and the person makes a ictal cry or there is a convulsion and there is a cry which comes out and the respiration may be impaired and there is a secretion which pulls out into the oropharynx and the patient may go into cyanosis okay so this is there there is even the contraction of the jaw biting of the tongue which is very very commonly seen if there is a biting of the tongue which is seen that gives us a con conclusion that okay there was a conversion because it is a sure sign where the person is bitten the tongue you know other sympathetic uh, changes are seen in the system where the heart rate increases because of <coughs> blood pressure will increase and even there is a change in the pupillary size now if you see ictal cry there is a rubric where there is crying which is seen during the conversion and the remedies are again the conversive remedies like absinthinum cupram indigo camphor okay epileptic conversion during if there is a cry the remedies are indigo cupram absinthinum belladonna lachesis so this is how this is how uh, we have to come to a, a a group of remedies you know because every convulsion every patient who gets a convulsion will have some individual features which needs to be taken up and that can be utilized and uh, used as a data for giving homeopathic medicine <coughs> after the tonic phase is over there is a clonic phase after 10 to 20 seconds the tonic phase settles down there is a clonic phase where there is muscle relaxation about the muscle contraction means the body is contracting and there is relaxation contracting and there is relaxation contracting and there is relaxation the period of relaxation progressively keeps on increasing till the end of ictal phase means a contraction follow when the tonic phase is there this is complete contraction and when there is a tonic clonic there is contraction relaxation contraction relaxation contraction relaxation i will show you a video later on which we have taken from the youtube We, we thank the team who has put that video on the YouTube, and that is a, a informational video for the education purpose. Then the post ictal phase, where the convulsions have settled down. Now, what happens the post ictal? The person is completely comatose, unresponsive. Person is not getting up. Then there is a muscular flaccidity. The persons are completely flaccid. There is a lot of drooling and excessive salivation. the breathing is stertorous breathing okay then there may be a the secretions which are there on the airways so there is a partial airways obstruction which is seen many a times there is a bowel and bladder incontinence see bowel and bladder incontinence again gives us a clue that the person has got a generalized tonic clonic conversion usually in partial seizures you don't get you don't get bowel and bladder incontinence this is again a take home message these are short things which we should keep in mind and the person will complain of severe headache fatigability muscular pains that though all these things are there in the post ictal phase and post ictal phase there is loss of consciousness which is very prolonged for many hours so i had a patient who had come with to generalized tonic clonic conversion which had started right from 4 o'clock in the evening and the patient got admitted at 11 means one after another one after another one after another so there would be a conversion which would last for more than you know even more than 15 to 20 minutes so then if the conversions are long lasting then those conversions are known as status epilepticus which we will study later on means the conversion which is going beyond a particular limit usually the conversion should be not more than you know 5 to 10 minutes but it, it is lasting for a longer duration and then it it is termed as status epilepticus so there are various eeg changes which can be seen tonic phase progressive increasing 
low voltage fast activity there will be increase in the so the activity depending on which lobe you are putting the electrode that particular lobe will pick up the activity which will be high and low voltage fast activity fast and eventually the low voltage get converted into high amplitude and there will be poly spike there will be multiple spikes which are seen and the clonic phase the activity will go again low slow waves are seen so this is how the ecg looks eeg looks sorry eeg will look like this normal waves then generalized you can see the generalized eeg there will be poly waves which are there and the amplitude is also high so now we talk about under the generalized seizure category we spoke about absence seizure we spoke about atypical absence seizure we spoke about generalized tonic clonic seizure okay now we speak about atonic seizures now now the atonic seizures are very very uh, uh, very very you know uh, very very classically seen as there is sudden loss of posture in absence seizure as i have mentioned there is no postural drop the postural muscle tone is maintained whereas in a tonic the word a tonic the tone of the muscle is lost it is a postural muscle tone loss for 1 to 2 second so it are very they are very brief brief uh, spells uh, where the consciousness is also impaired the muscle tone is also lost but the person post ictal post ictally person is absolutely normal there is no confusion post ictal confusion which is seen in generalized tonic clonic conversion there is <clears throat> there is a you know atonic seizures can present as sudden head drop or there is sudden collapse or sudden nodding movement of the head or there will be a, a collapse of the body but the person post ictally and i am absolutely fine you know something like that so this is how uh, it is different from generalized tonic clonic conversion and atypical seizure <clears throat> now we go on the another category they are known as myoclonic seizures it is a sudden and brief muscle contraction sudden brief sudden brief contraction that may involve one part of the body or it may have the entire body also a normal common physiological form of myoclonus is sudden jerky movement which is observed while falling asleep so we get myoclonic jerks sudden jerks when we are sleeping but if we are not sleeping and we get this that can be a myoclonic seizure the cause of myoclonic seizures can be you know underlying metabolic disorders or there may be a you know, cns de uh, degeneration or there may be a brain injury or trauma and they are true epileptic events and are produced because of there are some cortical dysfunction they are true that so we may have to find what is the cause of the disease in this case myoclonic seizure so myoclonic seizure is a type of conversion where there is a sudden uh, you know jerking movements and sudden you know the person is normal you know something like that usually myoclonic jerks they may be initial portion of the generalized seizure disorder okay so they may come hand in hand you know with other like example if i have got a generalized tonic clonic seizure and i may get myoclonic seizures in between and then eventually i may get generalized tonic clonic conversion like this and where i lose my consciousness completely and there is a post ictal phase but myoclonic seizures are most commonly seen in in kill children that's why it is known as juvenile myoclonic epilepsies so juvenile if a child suffers with a juvenile myoclonic epilepsy then there may be a combination of lot of things in that category just because it is happening in the childhood it is known as juvenile myoclonic epilepsy where myoclonic jerks are commonly seen so juvenile myoclonic myoclonic epilepsy is one of the type of epileptic syndromes so these syndromes have been categorized because they have a some common mechanism or process which is seen that's why they are labeled as epileptic syndrome one first category is juvenile myoclonic epilepsy which has no cause it may have a myoclonic jerks which i have told you as seen as seen in myoclonic seizure so the same thing is seen in this also it generally generally happens in the morning time after you get up and sleep deprivation okay 
and consciousness is preserved until it is very serious type. So here again the consciousness is preserved. <coughs> Many experience GTC or absence seizure also in this. Like example, I was giving you an example of 13 year old girl. She has absence seizure and one episode was there where she had a sudden, you know, transient, uh, you know, loss of consciousness. Maybe she is right now in a absence seizure. Eventually, she may move into a juvenile myoclonic seizure type syndrome, you know. So, the disease may progress or not progress. It is depending on the patient, you know. So, many experience GTC or absence seizure also. It is benign and rem remissions are difficult in such category. And it is said that there is some genetic association. There is a there is some family history of epilepsy there somewhere. And they often respond to anti-convulsing treatment properly. You understood? <laughs> so juvenile myoclonic uh, seizure, you'll find myoclonic jerks. May they have an absence seizure or they may eventually may also get generalized tonic-clonic conversion. So all the variety is there in this particular category. The word juvenile is because it is there in children. Okay. There is another syndrome which is known as Lennox Gestart syndrome. It is again in the children. Here you get everything. It, you may get GTC also, atonic, atonic, atonic jerks also, atypical season also, impaired cognitive, cognitive function. What do you mean by cognition? Thought. Cognition is nothing but thought, you know. So, cognition is lost, you know, thought is lost. The person has, doesn't have any, any, means the intellectual uh, correlation or the intellectual coordination is lost. lost often seen in with someone who has got development abnormalities and they may also get <coughs> difficult uh, birth histories there or bad obstetric histories there where there is a perinatal ischemia or hypoxia means when the child is born they may get a, a perinatal ischemia or hypoxia of the brain trauma or infection usually in this uh, the process there is a poor prognosis and uh, there are underlying pathologies which are there in this particular syndrome. So that's why this syndrome, the prognosis is poor. Now, we always talk about temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome. That is known as Messiel temporally temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome. This is one of the commonest type of syndrome which is associated with complex partial seizure. Means, the patient will have all the symptoms. I told you that complex partial seizure. The complex means the consciousness is disturbed. Partial means there is no generalized tonic-clonic conversions, and they may have often loss of uh, uh, loss of memory, or they may have got that peculiar aura where they can smell something, because all these centers are there in the temporal lobe. The memory center is also there in the temporal lobe. Olfactory center is also there in the temporal lobe. So generally, these guys who have got uh, uh, MTLE syndrome, this is known as MTLE syndrome, Mesial Temporal Lobe Epilepsy Syndrome, they often get all these symptoms and they behave like a complex partial seizure. The only thing is when you do a scan of such patient, what you feel that hip, hip, hippocampal area, that area has got degenerated and sclerosed on the MRI scan and often the the hippocampus is gone small because of the sclerosis and scarring and the, even you find that there is a shrinking shrinking of the temporal lobe which is there you know so when you are talking to the patient and you get an aura when you find there is an aura and uh, you take always take a history where there is any history of febrile conversions or you know family history of epilepsy what age this had started these are all always early onset type of epilepsy and there is a time where <clears throat> temporal lobe epilepsy patient is asymptomatic or in the phase of remission for a quite a brief period and again it restarts and the seizures are intractable means you cannot at that time you cannot uh, track down or you cannot just control it, you know, intractable seizures are there. The auras are very common. The special aura is they keep on staring at you or there is behavioral arrest. There is automatic behavior. 
and often there is unilateral posturing also which is seen post ictal what you can find there is a memory loss and there is a dysphagia also so this usually there is a, a, a behavior like a complex partial seizure all the symptoms are there on the scanning you find there is a temporal lobe there is a sclerosis of the hippocampus and that leads a lead to a lead to us with a diagnosis of uh, mesial temporal lobe epilepsy syndrome so these are the various syndrome which we have now like which we have already discussed in this temporal lobe epilepsy there are in the temporal electrodes we will find there are spikes and when you do a, a actual dynamic uh, uh, angiography mr ngo you find there is hypoperfusion which is seen when you do spectrometry and all this test you find there is a hypoperfusion means the blood supply to that particular area is reduced during the ictal phase during the ictal phase so now we have finished with the partial seizure we spoke about the generalized seizures also in that we have spoken about absence atypical absence then we spoke about generalized tonic cloning then we spoke about atonic then we spoke about myoclonic jerks then we spoke about epi epileptic syndromes in this juvenile myoclonic seizure myoclonic jerks and myoclonic everything is included in that okay usually they have uh, uh, you know it is early childhood onset then other was lennox gastault syndrome which is where there is developmental abnormality with all type of convulsions in it then the prognosis is very bad in lennox gastault gastault uh, syndrome then the third uh, type was uh, what we discussed was uh, temporal lobe epilepsy okay usually they are asymptomatic phase they may get a asymptomatic phase for a prolonged period and then there is a symptomatic phase so this is how we have now finished the classification of epilepsy intermittently i was telling you about various <coughs> various approaches and therapeutic uh, how we can use the last well, i would like to uh, explain before i go on the homeopathic section i think we will uh, uh, talk about this and then we can have a question answer session uh, and i'll show you some videos you know before i go on question answer session so this is a status epilepticus what do you mean by this is a clip or a photograph of harrison i thought that i should not uh, distort the what is given in the original text status epilepticus basically means there are continuous seizures where which are repetitive and discrete seizures with impaired consciousness okay there is loss of consciousness and they are repetitive and discrete seizure and the duration of the seizure can be from 15 minutes to 30 minutes so imagine for 15 to 30 minutes a person is having conversion and uh, the you imagine the person has been you know on treatment and the person is not responding uh, <coughs> to the treatment and the conversion continue you know it is a form of emergency because what happens there can be a cardio respiratory arrest or a cardio respiratory dysfunction the person can because of the tremendous muscular activity the core temperature of the body may rise there will be hyperthermia which can lead to a lot of problems cerebral edema and various other problems there can be metabolic derangements which can develop because of the convulsions so basically the entire agenda is we have to see to it that we have to first and foremost the convulsions have to be stopped okay and the convulsion if it is uh, lasting beyond 30 to 45 minutes then there is high chances the person may succumb to the problem you know and uh, the first thing is to stop the convulsion and if you find there is abnormality in in in, in the in, in the metabolism or if you find there is electrolyte imbalance you correct correct it immediately if there is any cardiac uh, uh, event which is impending like because of the conversion the patient may precipitate a myocardial infarct or the patient may go into a hypoxia and go into a myocardial infarct so all the supporting line of treatment has to be given and anti conversion should be given immediately so here if we if we understand from from our repertory so there is a i am just trying to show you there are there is a rubric called as status epilepticus and uh, and in this particular 
<coughs> rubric aconite ethusa belladonna cochlears onanthus plumbum and uh, zincum these are the drugs which have been mentioned now to be very very uh, very clear it becomes very difficult to give uh, 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 these drugs in a patient who is having a status a uh, status epilepticus because it is next to impossible to administer these drugs okay but nevertheless in spite of the given uh, anti convulsant therapy if the person is not responding and you know the person is refractory even when you are giving uh, muscle relaxants like uh, diazepam or you are giving you know fortwin finargan or or anti convulsants like you know phenytoin drip has been given and the patient is not responsive so we can use this drug one such case was with me uh, the, the gentleman was 25 years old i told you that he was convulsing right from 4 to 11 pm he was given all anti convulsants and all and we started him on stramonium and stramonium we had given on through olfactory uh, olfactory method and other thing was because by opening the mouth few drops of the liquid potency was put into his mouth because this was how we were giving and over a period of 2 3 hours his con convulsion frequency kept on reducing you know so that that thing was seen uh, but the patient was already given anti convulsion right from 4 o'clock onward you know and patient was not responding and he was brought to us at 11 o'clock at night 11 11 30 so there is definitely definitely a role of homeopathic line of treatment in such case but we have we have to be quite open and we have to go in in, in an integrated manner because we have to see the patient is a part a uh, patient uh, patient's life is more important okay so now let us uh, let me show you some videos and then we'll talk about the causes okay so this is a this is a video which shows an absence seizure like again i will start this does not have any audio you can see this man in the striped t-shirt he suddenly keeps on staring he he develops a behavioral arrest and then again he so it is sudden and sudden regain of consciousness i will show you again this this is how the absence seizure starts the person with the this video has been taken from the youtube it's available on youtube i just wanted to use it for educational purpose this person goes into a brief spell of a behavioral arrest and again it regains you know so this is about absence seizure then uh absence seizure we were talking on so this is a type of generalized uh phenomena generalized uh, seizure now the other one i will show you is generalized tonic clonic seizure just see it there is sudden loss of consciousness person is going into a tonic phase tonic phase is there is convulsing 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 then then the seizure stops after the seizure stop this is a post ictal phase he has lost the consciousness he is unaware he is confused okay so this is known as generalized tonic clonic convulsions then we were talking about atonic seizures how the atonic seizure starts so now let me restart it again just observe it complete carefully there is a head dropping and the person is immediately you know up upright he starts doing his activity and again there is a head dropping so there is a postural drop the consciousness may not be impaired the person can continue to do the activity which the person was doing the behavioral behavioral abnormality doesn't develop in this then
we will talk about myoclonic are you all understanding can someone say uh, unmute yourself and say whether they are understanding yes sir yes, yeah. so this this you see myoclonic seizure you can see this person in a green t-shirt you can see the jerks jerks are there okay it is bilateral it is symmetrical usually limbs and face are more commonly affected patient's consciousness is not impaired patient is conscious still the myoclonic jerks are going on the consciousness is not impaired the patient is conscious so now if this myoclonic seizure it happens in a juvenile age group with combination of absence seizure or sometimes this myoclonic jerks can get converted into a tonic clonic <laughs> tonic clonic uh, uh, conversion then they are classified as juvenile myoclonic seizures so very simple the additional one or two symptoms are there so Sir, can you please show which one so this last one only myoclonic one your somia yes sir yeah just a minute yeah can you see this yes sir you see the jerks okay so consciousness is not lost the muscular group of muscle goes into activity abnormal activity involuntary activity okay abnormal involuntary activity <clears throat> now we will uh, i will share with you the temporal lobe uh, epilepsy kind of uh, this just a minute i'll restart it now it is restarted so the person gets into a abnormal now this person he just moving in circle you know he just turning around in a circle so this is a this is a abnormal psychomotor experience which a person gets and uh, the consciousness is not lost so it is typical of temporal lobe epilepsy there is no generalized tonic clonic convergence so it is because of the <coughs> temporal lobe dysfunction so can you please show it again yeah 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 thank you sir see this fellow is turning around in a circle and he is disconnected to with the to his friend you know and his friend is trying to ask him what is happening with him he just observing what is happening he just turning in circle uh, circle it is happening for few seconds or few minutes again he is back to consciousness friend is asking are you okay he says okay there is no as such a, a major degree of confusion Did you get this? Yes, sir. The another another video of temporal lobe epilepsy. He starts laughing. <laughs> so he starts laughing, laughing, and it is a very transient. You know, he starts laughing. This is abnormal behavior which develops. So now, when we are saying that it is a mesial temporal lobe. <laughs> mesial temporal lobe uh, epilepsy syndrome or temporal lobe epilepsy we have to do a scan and find out what is the status of the temporal lobe and the hippocampus you know so that will help us to
So this, see this, I will share, uh, I don't know whether you can see this photograph. Can you see this photograph? Hello, can you see this photograph? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this lady was a comatose lady. She just had a, you know, a mild eye opening, but she was really responsive. Uh, you can see that, you know, uh, she has been uh, given RT feeds and there is a air bed which is there. So she was uh, actually, I, I went for a home visit. She was already admitted at uh, uh, Lions Hospital at uh, Andhegi and then followed by it was admitted at uh, uh, VNDSI Hospital. And they said that now there is, she is in, into a near vegetative state and she she will, you know, probably not recover or even, even if she recovers, it will take almost months to years, you know. So what happened is, uh, then they said, okay, you discharge the patient, you keep the patient at home. And the patient was kept uh, at her house and I had gone for a home visit. And all the necessary, whatever the precautions needs to be taken, like RT feeding and all, I guided them with air bed and change of position and all. And uh, along with that, uh, she was on all the regular line of treatment. And we just started her on phosphorus as a remedy. And eventually, I'll show you the video. This was her bed sores, you know, you can see her bed sores because of, you know, uh, not changing the positions very frequently. This is a gluten area where there is a bed, show, bed sores or the wound. Okay. Now I will show you the video, which is, which I, now she's conscious. She's, I am blinking his face. She is. She is holding her bed sheet. She is moving her neck. Is there a in the video? So this is how, you know, there is a, the person who was completely comatose and now this lady landed up with, uh, because she was a diabetic, she, uh, she was uh, basically, she was a diabetic lady and uh, she had gone into hypoglycemia, that's how she landed up with hypoglycemic uh, convulsions with coma, you know. So usually, if you understand, the cause of seizure and epilepsy is there is a balance which is disturbed between the excitatory and the inhibitory impulses in the brain. There can be genetic factors and there is epileptogenesis which happens due to trauma. So now trauma becomes a very important. It has been seen that trauma, uh, maybe a trauma has happened in the month of say August, but the patient may land up with conversion over a period of two months, three months, six months, because what happens, the neural, neural pathway which is there in the brain gets uh, remodified and there is a abnormal pathway which gets created and the neurons start misfiring or it fires at an abnormal pace and it leads to you know uh, a, a epileptogenesis a new abnormal neural pathway is being created and the person gets into conversion this is very important so trauma history is very important if a patient starts getting conversion so when we see uh, there is in the in the mri or the city there may not be a, any any uh, obvious pathology or the scarring or the hematoma there in the brain, but still the patient gets a conversion. So that's why conversion after head injury, that's why the drugs like, you know, Arnica or Natron cells is very important, you know. So that's how we can correlate it with homeopathically. The other precipitating factors for conversions can be psychological stresses and physical stress. So there is something called as psychological factors like stress or physical stress. 
physical stress can be like loss of sleep okay or there is you know psychological stress means the patient gets conversion when they have been reprimanded so if they have been shouted scolded or there is anger they hold the anger then they get a conversion if they are very angry <coughs> that's why the drugs like camomilla can come up or conversions when they have been reprimanded or shouted insulted indignated then the remedies like staphylococcus or colocin can come up so this is how the remedies can come up okay so then uh, there are certain phenomena which are known as reflex epilepsy reflex epilepsy means as soon as there is a sound the person gets gets a conversion or as soon as there is a loud voice if i shout you know if i shout at uh, yarish uh, yarish and he gets a conversion so these are all all or you know if i shout at mohit and then he gets a conversion you know so something like that you know so these are all reflex epilepsy where these the trigger factors they are there in the environment sleep deprivation is very important so loss of sleep a person who has got an epilepsy needs to be informed or a person who has got a tendency to conversion that the sleep deprivation is a very important factor hormonal changes means the conversions happening during the menses or conversion happening during the pregnancy or the conversions which are happening during puberty this is because of hormonal influence in the body so this is how everything is correlated you know everything is given in a textbook of medicine we have to just pick up the right cause right right modality according to bonigosen's concept and apply it and you get the remedy so then there are some drugs which can give rise to conversion there are drug induced conversions also which is there like penicillin derivatives are there you know there are there are quinolones or antibiotics which can like akt like isoniazide is known to produce uh, conversions so these are all so sometimes there are iotrogenic causes which leads to artificial disease and these artificial disease can get converted into a chronic dynamic disease with fully developed symptom so there is unfolding of myism it started with a drug which the person has consumed and he starts getting conversion and then it becomes an automatic phenomena so when we are going to cause according to understanding of myism we have to understand the predisposing causes or predisposing myasmatic any abnormalities there in the near past like any history of like a person can with a infection can go also get a conversion like meningitis tuberculosis meningitis a person can get conversions or person who's got cerebral malaria can get high grade fever and conversions or any precipitating factors or modalities and then a, epileptogenic and epidural uh, lesions or factors means epileptogenic factors means like trauma and all lesions means like any tumor any tumor any scar any calcification any you know like neurocystic sarcosis or something like that you know now this is written with hand i hope you can take a, a photo of this we will put it later on on youtube also this is a complete uh, chart if you sit with this chart while you are studying for your exams i think this will cover everything i have done the classification on this chart yeah you have taken a photo of this yes sir yeah so it's it gives a complete summary of whatever we have spoken i think many of you have understood and very few must have not understood okay and very less people would have misunderstood so that's why this chart is important okay and at each stage if you observe very carefully we have lot of drugs you know this this is something like an approach towards the seizure find out the cause first prime most why the person is getting conversion and if the cause is not found and it is recurrent then it is termed as epilepsy but imaging you do blood blood uh, uh, thing blood uh, uh, analysis you do electrolyte checking you do lfts you check any other uh, any other toxins is been consuming there are patients who are on certain drugs and all like you know uh, addict, addiction personalities like alcoholism they are taking some drugs some narcotic agents or some you know nicotine or something the all the other things also can contribute to conversions you know now the very important thing is when the person gets the first episode like i am a person who comes with the first episode to you now you get confused are a conversion hai 
फैक्टर as such it is sudden it which starts syncopal epi- episode it is known that the person may get some kind of emotional stress or there will be you know he must be doing some activity like he is sit- rising up from sitting position or he is doing some procedure or something where there is sudden pain or he is breathing heavily or you know there is underlying uh, problem of circulation like hypotension and all this is there in syncopal episode then there are no auras seen as such in syncopal episode but auras are felt in seizure syncopal episodes will come up with certain symptoms like you know like sweating physiological things can be the nausea tiredness visual there is blurring of vision these are the things which are there in syncopal episode so these are pre monetary symptoms but these are not called as auras auras are like auras related to odor hallucination these are seen in seizures they <laughs> many a times the posture at the onset in the seizure is variable syncopal episode wo bolega main khada tha aur main gir gaya in seizure it may not be that he is always standing he may be sitting he may be just lying down and then he gets a seizure so these things are very important then consciousness unconsciousness what we say suddenly the person goes into uh, unconscious state in seizure whereas in syncopal it is a gradual process the person may get certain nausea vomiting diaphoresis slowly slowly and then the person goes into an unconscious state so there are few seconds before which the person becomes unconscious whereas then we consider about the duration of unconsciousness the seizures the unconsciousness is only few minutes in syncope it is few seconds syncopal episodes are very very transient the word transient is different from brief brief can be in minutes transient is only in fraction of seconds so syncopal episodes are transient seizure episodes are brief then what we see is there is a tonic clonic activity which is often reported in seizure in syncopal episode usually there is no tonic clonic activity but there may be some tightness or there may be some decortication which can be there which is hardly for 5 to 10 seconds but not more than 15 seconds but in seizure this may last for a few seconds in syncopal episode this decerebrate or decorticate kind of a rigidity develops because there is a transient loss of blood or there is a transient is- ischemia which develops in the syncopal episode because of that you find this is some abnormality but it is not more than 15 seconds it is quite prolonged in terms of up to a minute in seizure then frothing and all is there in seizure which may not be there in syncopal episode and there may be tongue bite which is there in in a in in a seizure okay once a person is normal the seizure or the syncope the post post episode the seizure the patient may have some confusion or headaches and he may take some time few minutes <coughs> or hours to recover wherever wherever the recovery in syncopal episode is quite quick it is less than uh, maybe a 3 to 4 minutes or 5 minutes okay and usually because there is a increased tonic clonic uh, activity which is there of the muscles the patient with seizure will complain of severe severe body ache and headache whereas the syncopal people they often do not get such symptoms post ictal body ache and headache is not there in syncopal they may feel light high, light headed because there is a transient uh, uh, brief spell of uh, uh, impairment of blood circulation to the brain then biting of tongue i have already told you incontinence incontinence is very common in seizures it is not seen in syncopal until unless it is a it is a major attack or you know there is a loss of uh, blood supply to the particular part of the brain and it is a transient phenomena then only you get it or especially when there is a brief spell of vertebro basilar insufficiency okay but usually the incontinence is more common in seizure and 
headaches are more common in seizure so this is a a brief uh, differentiation between a seizure and a syncope you can just take a, a, a photograph this is taken from the harrison's textbook of medicine of internal medicine it's a it's a with, with a snapshot dif differentiation which has been given <coughs> i had already mentioned about the drugs which can lead to seizure which is also given in the textbook <coughs> now this is a thing which we need how do we differentiate convulsion or seizure from other like syncopal episode psychological disorders metabolic disturbances or migraine transient ischemic attacks or uh, sleep disorders movement disorders these are all differential diagnosis which we have to keep in mind when we are now what is important here is if a person gets a seizure and there is a person who is mimicking like seizure but he is not getting a convulsion especially it happens in convulsion disorders or hysterical patients like in our materia medica ignatia is a remedy for that the the commonest differentiation which we find is the the uh, the convulsion in a person who has got a seizure will be more methodical and maybe this uh, maybe in a very very synchronized manner whereas in a person who is hysterical will have a abrupt movement of of the hand you know abrupt movement of the hand and secondly what is more important is pelvic thrust pelvic thrust are seen the pelvic movements are done in a person who has got hysterical and convulsion whereas in in a seizure disorder or a person who has got an epileptic attack will not have that kind of a uh, 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 abnormal pelvic thrust usually there is no pelvic thrust in a convulsion and the third point of differentiation between a seizure disorder and a psychological uh, uh, disorders is you do a serum prolactin level serum prolactin levels are usually high in seizure disorder especially in a post ictal phase of 15 to 30 minutes if you draw withdraw blood in a post ictal phase and if send it for a serum prolactin level it is more more high in a seizure disorder okay so it is not so in cases of psychotropic or sorry psychological or uh, psychological uh, convulsions or psychological disorders more if you understand the cause of seizure in infancy and neonates is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy traumas infections congenital abnormalities any mother maternal history of some uh, abnormal drugs uh, hypocalcemia see hypocalcemic tetany is very common if a neonate is born and you know if there a child is born and in a neonate hypocalcemia is very common so usually giving them a calcium uh, you know in a iv uh, drip form can help to correct that and other important is hypoglycemia so in hypoglycemic episode especially a child born to a, a diabetic mother you know if a mother has got a gestational history and if there a child can go into hypoglycemia and develop convulsions so you have to keep a check on that so this is what we will learn when you do a neo neonatology and a pediatric posting you know then pyridoxine deficiencies are very common which may give rise to a neonatal seizures so i am trying to cover few glimpses from uh, overall holistically because we understand we giving a homeopathic drug is is a uh, important but before that diagnosis of the disease is important if you have a hypocalcemia i don't think that if you give a homeopathic drug and the child will get all right until unless you correct the hypocalcemia similarly if there is a hypoglycemia we have to correct this physiological component then only the convulsions will be controlled then what is more important here is febrile convulsions are very common we have a child at our house if you get a febrile if there is a fever we need to control the fever and from homeopathic physician angle also we have to be aggressive in treating a child who has got a fever because there are chances the child may go into a febrile convulsions and they can get into a gtc generalized tonic clonic seizure during a fever episode so reducing the temperature is very important so there are methodical methods of reducing temperature like giving a cold water sponging and you know cold sponging is very important 
or bringing down temperature by using anti pyrating if it is required is also fine there is no problem if your remedy is not working no problem you reduce the temperature in a child you understand because if a child goes into a conversion he is, he will his brain will get damaged so because more the conversion the more is the damage to the brain you know so treating infection which reach to fever is important in late infancy and early childhood because this is a time where the febrile conversion start in the first year of the life it is said that of the child is getting a first year of a, a fever first year of life if they get a fever there are chances that the child may get later on converted into an epileptic you understood so we have to control it very very quickly and treat the cause of the disease like infections in the body so recurrence episode is very high if the febrile conversion is in during the first year of the life so recurrence rate is very high we have to understand that so there are something called a simple febrile uh, seizure which is a single isolated event which is a brief and symmetric but if there is a complex febrile seizure which is characterized where the seizure is very repetitive and the duration of the conversion is more than 15 minutes so this is how we categorize even the febrile conversions or febrile seizures more than 15 minutes and repeated is complex and simple is less than a very single episode is known as simple febrile recurrence is very common if it is a first year of life of child you understood and it is said if it is a prolonged lasting conversion then the person can go into a repeated or a complex febrile seizure can get into a, a what we say a generalized tonic clonic conversion and epileptic the person can become a epileptic childhood epilepsy temporal lobe epilepsy is very common missile temporal lobe epilepsy where there is a temporal sclerosis is very common infections are common in adolescence again epileptic syndromes are very common trauma is very common infections are the cause and drug withdrawals alcohol withdrawal can be another reason and sometimes there are idiopathic there is no cause in adult a uh, head trauma which is of penetrating type is very common especially skull fracture if it is associated with skull fracture that's why drunken driving drunken driving is a crime and that's why driving without helmet is a crime you understood riding a motorbike without a helmet is a crime because the incidence of head trauma is so high that after a trauma even if the person recovers the post uh, traumatic epileptic syndromes are very common post traumatic conversions are very common so this is what we have to understand i had a patient who was having accelerated hypertension there was a uh, there was a intracranial bleed and person had a conversion and the patient was in comatose and i tried to treat it treated him by giving uh, a, a remedy a very common remedy belladonna and he recovered completely after that there was no basically we were planning for a surgical approach if you would have been comatose furthermore the uh, neurosurgeon had said that we may have to go for a surgery and before that with homeopathic the patient came out so that is a very very classical example where patient had a intracranial bleed because of accelerated hypertension so you understand so circulatory cause can give rise to a cns cause everything is interlinked the entire body is connected old age trauma uh, sorry old age seizure i i have already discussed uh, hypoglycemia as one of the cause of conversion and coma then cerebrovascular accident trauma cns tumors any kind of degenerative brain disease okay acute seizures which can be because of the cva if a person gets a stroke still the person can get a conversion because of the cerebral edema or because of any any kind of uh, bleed in the brain okay so old age you can get all this so uh, we will talk brief about the treatment and then we will conclude once you get up you see a person who is conversing first of all remove any dangerous item which is surrounding the person okay and make the person lie down on the ground safely so that he doesn't fall or he doesn't injure himself or she doesn't injure herself 
there is no head trauma or or head injury always give a left lateral position which is seen in in the diagram number 3 and 4 okay in a photograph number 3 and 4 the person has been given a left lateral position basically this is a right lateral position but the best position is a left lateral position which is also known as a recovery position side position recovery position because whatever the secretion is there will drool out from the left left angle of the mouth if you give a right uh, side the lateral position what happens is there is a chance that if some saliva go remains in the mouth it may go into the right side of the lung because the right bronchus is oblique is oblique whereas the left bronchus is more horizontal okay the right bronchus is oblique and the left bronchus is horizontal so even if the drooling happens if the saliva is there in the upper airway it will come out with gravity if the person is lying on the left side but if the person is lying on the right side there is a chances that it, the saliva saliva or the secretions can go in and deposited in the right side of the lung and there are chances that the patient will land up with pneumonia so keep the people out of out from the place clear the dangerous objects you see how much time the conversion is lasting as far as possible give the person a proper uh, side position and uh, don't try to put your hand in the mouth and all because that may even injure you and uh, we can arrange for a medical help or we can transport the patient if we are a doctor ourselves then we can find out common causes like you know doing a sugar levels and finding out whether the person is in hypoglycemia and you just see when the how the person is regaining consciousness <coughs> you don't have to get pan panic about do not try to restrain the person you have to just keep the person safe that he is not harming the person uh, himself do not put anything in the mouth okay usually when they are conversing we try to put our hand or something like if at all you want to put it you can put a cotton if it is easily possible if it not possible don't try to put anything because you may injure yourself so i think we will uh, i think many more slides are there we can uh, you would like to continue or we will call it i think we have discussed the approach and all very well and we have uh, understood how to take the history and identify the remedies and all so i will just briefly go through this slides if you allow me i think beginning in which part of the body the conversion is beginning we have already discussed the conversion is because of infection confer confer uh, uh, is there in uh, because of meningitis conversion because of the infection the rubric has been mentioned and there are various drugs which have been uh, written there so i think we will conclude here and and if required if if any further difficulties you can get in touch with me and we have already uh, finished uh, the major part of uh, the medical or the clinical part of the epilepsy and the seizure disorder and differential diagnosis we have also spoken about the equatorial approach and various remedies we have discussed about it and uh, the common line of treatment which we can uh, the common uh, do's and don'ts don'ts of uh, conversion also we have discussed so i think we will uh, end it here if there is any question you can ask me so yeah sir i have this one question uh, we were discussing about status epilepticus uh, in that how will we decide the grade as in uh, plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 how will we decide that thing yeah just a minute ah huh? yeah so when we are saying status is epileptic as i have already mentioned we have to time the seizure and if the seizure is continuous it itself proves that the person is going into status epileptic status epileptic is diagnosed once the person has started the conversing and it is going beyond 20 minutes you know so that itself whether it is 20 minutes 30 minutes or 40 minutes it doesn't matter because status epileptic is per se is a critical and the last stage of the convulsions you know in these category in this category we have to basically first and foremost we have to start correcting the cause and start uh, 
uh, uh, start uh, taking measures which will control the conversions you know in such a case there is sometimes anesthetic agents also administered so that the person goes into uh, uh, at ease or the conversion stops you know hello yes sir understood any other questions So I, I think we have uh, classified it. Sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah, Vijayta, ma'am, go ahead. Sir, uh, if uh, the patient has absent seizures or like atonic seizures, hmm. but बहुत time तक उन लोग को पता ही नहीं होता है कि क्या हो रहा है. Hmm. So can we find out uh, a past history of epilepsy through any test or something? Past history of epilepsy cannot be found. So epilepsy is a symptomatic diagnosis. so what at the most we can do we can screen the uh, screen the brain we can screen the brain for any abnormalities or anything but basically majority of the time epilepsy is idiopathic so you will have to, it's a basically a clinical diagnosis epilepsy is a clinical diagnosis and uh, it is a completely a neuropsychiatric diagnosis means many a times the patient goes lands up with a psychiatrist and then it is found that that it's an epilepsy you know so it's a neuropsychiatric disorder or a neuropsychiatric disease you know okay so uh, sir if uh, a patient is coming to us and uh, the last attack that person got was very uh, so many years ago like 10 years ago and uh, from that time that person is uh, already taking medications so how will we know that uh, whether the medicine is acting or not in that case because uh, at uh, any point they have to take that uh, anti convulsant medicines as well so there is uh, the answer to this is if a person is already on anti convulsants so the if the person is not getting conversion for last 10 years it itself proves that the person has been symptomatically well controlled because of the anti conversions that the person is using second answer second point to this answer is this question is in order to know whether the anti conversions are having enough therapeutic level in the body what we do is we send a blood level of whatever drug the person is taking like example person is taking uh, uh suppose uh, phenytoin is taking like like tablet eptoin is taking so you send a blood level analysis of of uh, phenytoin you know so then it is in the laboratory they will see the whether the phenytoin level in the blood of this epileptic person is in the therapeutic range so there is a therapeutic range which is supposedly the range which is uh, uh, good enough to control the conversion that is the meaning of the therapeutic range similarly they may we can we can send it for blood level of valproic acid so there are various anti conversions which are used in the patient and the the blood level of these anti epileptic drugs can be analyzed and we can come to a conclusion whether they are in the therapeutic a uh, range if the range is less it is below the range then it has the dose of the epileptic drug has to be increased and if it is much above the range then the the uh, the dose of the drug has to be reduced you know understand so this is an answer to you if there is no symptom no conversion that itself proves that the person is on optimum uh, optimum control because of the anti epileptics and in such case now if i answer with the third angle that is a homeopathic angle the patient may come to you and ask your advice whether i can reduce so it is said if the person is more than 2 years symptom free more than 2 years symptom free not even one symptom there of conversion and you do a recent blood test as well as a scanning or no no fresh abnormalities found so you can gradually start weaning the anti epileptic drugs and along with that you can give homeopathic medicines uh considering the constitution of the person or if there is any characteristic in the convulsions those the uh, symptoms can be uh, taken into consideration and the totality can be formed yeah any further question 
सर आई हैड अ डाउट लाइक यू सेड दैट डेजा वू इज आल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ सीजर बट इट इज यूजुअली सेड दैट ऑलमोस्ट एवरी वन ऑफ अस एक्सपीरियंसेस डेजा वू वंस इन अ वाइल सो दैट इज डज दैट मीन दैट ऑल ऑफ अस हैव द काइंड ऑफ सीजर ओनली नो वंस इन अ वाइल इज ओके बट इट बिकम्स अ रिपीटेड फिनोमेना एंड दैट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग एनी एनी any difficulty in our day to day activity then it becomes a trouble something then you may start investigating basically deja vu it usually happens in in type of complex partial seizure where you get this kind of uh, or uh, or sensation you know so then you start investigating so we once in a while that's fi- that's fine but if it is happening very very frequently and it is disturbing the intellectual capacity of the person or it is producing any kind of uh, difficulty in uh, routine or performance levels then we start investigating it so when we try to diagnose epilepsy we have to understand the symptoms from all the angle we understood whether it is producing psycho uh, motor abnormality or it is producing any kind of behavioral abnormality or uh, social uh, abnormality or physical or neurological problems So if you have to think totality, once in a while is is not a issue, you know. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Any further questions? No, sir. So can we end our session here? Hope it was helpful to you. Any feedbacks you would like to give? Yeah, Juvaria Sadna. Any feedback? Asa Ori, Deepali. No feedback. So we'll conclude our session here now, and. Uh, we can we will hello sir hi, hi. Yes. <laughs> sorry mute unmute nahi ho raha tha okay so the session was really good and helpful actually sare basics fir se thode se revise ho gaye and uh, especially the differentiation that you did that was really wonderful and i hope ki hum logo ko wo ppt ya aapke jo basics hai wo mil jaye so that we can just go through it Our uh, IT team is there. You know, our IT team. Yeah, definitely. Soon, soon put it on YouTube after uh, after you know going through it. You know. Yes, sir. The basic purpose of this session was when patient comes, see, when there is not always a possibility that you know the patient will uh, get diagnosed somewhere and it will come to us. There are times and situations where we are standing and the patient can converse. You know, conversion can happen in front of us. Sir, there was this doubt that, uh, as in case of uh, petit mal, right? Mm-hmm. In case of like absent seizures, जहाँ पे मतलब कुछ as such uh, there is just the transient, uh, this uh, kind of absent minded, lost feeling, right? So yeah. yeah, in that case, like how we will differentiate it with uh, like uh, normally, like as a child or someone are lost or uh, like for example absent minded रहते हैं लोग. So, उससे कैसे फिर डिफ्रेंशिएट करेंगे When your time this happen, कि frequent absent mindedness रहता है बच्चों को सो देन वॉट टू डू इन सच केसेस और हाउ टू गो अड सीबर There is sudden cessation of the activity which the person is doing. He is not at all. He is, he is completely disconnected, and that is a, a very sudden onset. And there is also the sudden regain of the person, you know, of the conscious state. So this is what is different from a absence of mind, which you say because of the behavior, you know. You understood in a child. The child is still active. The absence of mind, he will be keeping on doing his activity. And he will have absent-mindedness. That is different from an absence. You will find that this person is suddenly switched off. You know, for a fraction of the second, he is completely disconnected. You know, he is lost into, and you know, he then comes into a, a, a regain uh, state. You know, so that can be actually 
very very clearly a parent can pick it up or we as an adult if we are seeing some patient we will pick it up you know okay so the other parallel activity is not going on in absent mindedness the parent okay is not doing something other activity but what activity he is engaged into he is not into that activity like if he is in the class he is not into but he is doing something else he is absent minded you know he is this okay so that is different you know, then actual absence is there you know? okay 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 sir got it sama okay any any further questions so i will uh, conclude the session by thanking all of you and uh, investing your valuable sunday for this session thank you dr reshan we will soon uh, try to uh, announce another session we'll send it on group to you all guys okay thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir okay okay thank you bye